You're all seeing that digitization is really having a major impact on most parts of our lives, and that means technologies are developed which are easy to use and are widely applied. And that includes the development of smart technologies for a variety of different questions of technical application. This is true for wind power just as much. And as Dr. Paulus said, wind power is one of the key technologies for the energy turnaround, and we agree with that. So such technological innovations are matters that we generally welcome as a great opportunity in order to make the necessary change and extension of wind power as nature compatible as possible. And it also constitutes a major contribution for a variety of different strategies and not just, but also technology-based strategies, which will help reduce uh, conflicts, particularly when it comes to species protection issues. As Ms. Paulus has already pointed out, we have some very difficult tensions between what is not in dispute an urgently necessary turnaround of our energy system, but equally it's as urgent to protect the species because that helps us maintain biodiversity. Ms. Paulus talked about the large-scale objectives regarding um, energy power, the net consumption of wind power, which she said is to be 65 percent by 2030, and that is the current national um, requirement that we are debating. By 2040, we want to achieve 80 percent renewables, and of course, without extending wind energy, this will not be possible. Wind energy offers a huge potential, helping us to achieve our climate targets, but at the same time, it is something which we'll have to drive home. It is a survival based requirement and target to keep and maintain our biodiversity. When you're looking at the current target set in the National Biodiversity Strategy, you will see it's not just about keeping our uh, biodiversity, but we're actually trying to turn things around to reverse the trend. And these are targets which are of equal important to us. And for us as a federal agency for nature conservation, these are both clear political requirements we'll need to deal with. In order to achieve these targets, as we've already briefly heard, it is necessary to improve energy efficiency on the one hand, but let us not forget that it's also necessary to save energy wherever this is possible, because all our strategies depend very much on savings of energy, energy use reduction. It's also very important that we have a strategic distribution of the different types of energy sources. And apart from wind power, the second important pillar for our energy generation would be photovoltaics. And there is a third element as well, and that would be a nature-compatible way of extending these renewables. And that's what we are trying to contribute to also with our research. Today and tomorrow, it is eco-friendly or nature-compatible extension of wind power by using state-of-the-art technologies. A very important starting point for us are the targets laid down in the National Strategy on Biodiversity, of which one is listed on the slide you can now see. The generation of use of renewable energy should not go to the detriment of biodiversity. That's a very ambitious, but also very necessary target. In order to achieve this, basic avoidance options will need to be taken into account, and the conflict risks, uh, conflict of objectives of wind power and nature conservation, as well as species protection, should be minimized. That includes choosing basically well-suited sites which will not have a lot of conflict of objectives. That's the, the most important leverage we can use. And this is where smart technology comes in. We want to minimize existing conflicts on the site. Another important aspect 
apart from the site selection, and in Germany, sites uh, tend to be selected through spatial planning, and where our spatial and regional planning isn't equipped to look at the sites properly, it would be necessary to have site screenings on a very large scale. In this context, we are also developing scenarios to explore different types of use and extension of renewable energy, um, and we see what sort of site requirements really are. And something which we are very much focusing on these days is the implementation of avoidance and mitigation measures, which is a very important aspect. In order to support the conflict mitigation measures on site, we think technologies should be used wherever they can be helpful. It equally needs something else, though, and that is what you can see on these slides. Namely, it needs to be a proper framework. We need to be involved in drawing up the framework for the use of technology, which means that nature conservation issues need to be considered as we develop the technologies and not afterwards. So, in other words, not have the technology and then say, oh, we would have liked this, but put these matters right in at the beginning so that we can influence developments. But one thing is absolutely clear, and everybody listening and, and participating or anybody just going through an approval process needs to understand, decisions on the use and implementation of such technologies will always be based on the concrete case and concrete site and be made by the local responsibilities, not by us. Let me make that very clear. In addition, using smart technologies of course means that more insights can be gleaned as a matter of principle about uh, conflict uh, mitigation and beyond. So it could be about a collision event in the area of a site, which is very interesting where, where WTG is located, which could also have an impact on the behavior of migratory birds or of bats, and that in its turn will impact the risk assessment, for example, of a particular site. It can also help to overall optimize the operation of a WTG. Insights which are relevant for approval processes from a legal point of view would be systematic, permanent observation and analysis of the data gleaned. And as far as that's concerned, we're still very much at the beginning, as we have to freely admit at the moment. Uh, when um, we're looking at this, we are in looking into conflict avoidance and conflict uh, reduction rather than anything else. But we should also bear in mind that uh, all the um, insights we have uh, been able to get from smart technologies can, can also be used for other parts of nature conservation. Many of the monitoring jobs we normally have can now be uh, done with smart technologies. So these are all very good reasons why we and, and nature conservation uh, consider it uh, helpful to look into the matters of smart technologies. When we're looking at smart technologies, we are differentiating between um, five areas of action in order to uh, mitigate problems uh, on existing wind power sites. I don't want to go into every single detail here, just a few buzzwords. When I'm speaking of acoustics, we're talking primarily about automatic call detection and analysis for which we use AI. Uh, we're speaking of neural networks, for example. When we're looking at optics, it's learning cameras. Cameras with have uh, a, a special species detection also on the basis of neural networks, when we're talking radar, we're talking about the automatic detection and prediction of bird and bat movements. Uh, for example, we also analyze uh, weather radar data. Then there are some developments uh, necessary which uh, are software specific. And uh, for example, we're looking at the development of shutdown algorithms in order to protect bats. Uh, that particular system has been developed quite uh, far already. And as one last area of action, we are speaking of telemetry, namely satellite-based real-time tracking of bird movements and the knowledge we get about um, flocking behavior, for example, also attraction, i.e., um, 
attractiveness, increasing habitat structures, or the success of different operational methods, for example, different types of avoiding instruments. These can all be observed with these technologies. So different technologies have been developed um, to a different level of maturity. Acoustic systems such as microphones to uh, record the calls of bats or telemetry, these are already being used. Um, AI-based technologies such as the learning cameras are still being developed, although they are going to be very important. In the following, I would like to very briefly take you through a few um, R&D plans or projects which are going to be very important and which we are currently working on in the Federal Agency for Nature Conservation, some of which have just been completed. The first R&D project focuses, and I don't want to read all of this to you, which is written here. Uh, maybe it will be helpful. Um, so the first is the um, Woodland Site WTG Plant Planning and Approval Process Optimization Regarding Species Protection Concerns. The focal areas would be the detection of dormant woodland species, for example, woodpeckers. Then we have an analysis of uh, sensitive, determined disturbance sensitivity vis-a-vis -vis wind turbines, automated acoustic detection on the basis of recorders specifically developed for the purpose, automated call recognition. And on this basis, we can also analyze call patterns depending on the distance to the WTG. So that's one of the uh, projects. And the second one, which I would like to at least briefly mention, is a, a radar-supported uh, avoidance uh, measure um, in migrating birds at wind turbines. And we here have the data, archive data, as well as current data from weather radar stations regarding uh, bird migration in uh, Germany's skies with the help of algorithms, which we're doing in the spatiotemporal dynamics and analyze this. The idea here is that on this basis, we can come to predictions on actual bird uh, migration and like rain radar, use it. Uh, Dr. Hüppert from the Institute for Bird Protection Research is going to talk about that tomorrow. Another uh, project that we are dealing with, which I would like to very briefly mention, concerns the further development of the practice um, of shutdown requirements to protect bats when it comes to operating wind turbines. That's a tool which we call ProBat. And we have version seven of this tool and currently in the development pipeline, and we hope it will be completed before the end of uh, November. It's a tool which is already seeing regular use in certain wind farms and is actually used successfully there. We're going to have a presentation of ProBat as well by a speaker tomorrow, so I don't need to go into detail here and now. Another project I should mention is the wind test site that Dr. Paul has already mentioned in her introduction. This is a test site, our first wind uh, energy test site, where all the technologies I mentioned from acoustics, optics, radar, software, and telemetry are being researched and developed further. The added value in this is uh, the fact that we are comparing the different systems, which technology detects which species, when and how successful is that detection. These are insights uh, that we can glean from that wind test site. And there's also a lot of um, development going on, particularly when it comes to optics. Here we're talking about optimizing the test site. The focus is on the development and testing of avoidance measures. And so we also have a camera-based detection system for an automated shutdown of uh, WTG. So this detection system is to use neural networks to 
independently learn some of the specific characteristics of specific species of birds. I think this is absolutely exciting. It's a technology which we would intend to develop further to also detect insects. You may all remember that one year ago, we suddenly had a debate about uh, insects dying um, in wind turbine areas. Now we're trying to at least develop detection possibilities in order to then draw conclusions as to how relevant the issue of insect mortality and WTG is. We were initially somewhat skeptical and said oh, we don't see any need to act here, but of course we are quite happy to learn any new uh, details and maybe change our attitude on the basis of data. Dr. Busil tomorrow is going to talk about this. So you can see we're going to have some very exciting presentations tomorrow. Very important for us when we use such new technologies, and that will bring me to the end. I'm noticing that people are getting, uh, our uh, chairperson is getting a bit impatient with me. So anyway, one of course is we need concrete rules which would make it possible to use these technologies in a uniform way. And one other point, which is often overlooked, we have to make sure that all sorts of different data protection and privacy rules need to be realized when using the data and collecting the data in the first place and then using them. Right, I'll skip this one. Important for me, and I think all these projects I shared with you briefly show that what we are looking at, uh, technology and what is developing here, we want to make sure that this will lead to a viable balance between these two big uh, challenges for society, which will prove to be so critical and which result from global change on both the climate issue and the dramatic worsening of the biodiversity situation. Extending renewable energy, and I don't think there is anybody in nature conservation who doubts that we need to do this, but that is definitely a, a clear answer to these problems. We want to make sure that we can contribute to uh, an improvement of the biodiversity situation. We, we consider that to be a question of um, systemic relevance, and we want to see this considerably uh, accounted for. Today's new technologies can make a major contribution here.